All right, so this will be section 3.3. Um, I couldn't really fit two problems on one sheet so nicely. This is your problem one. Um, my s guess is you might not be able to do too much with it without me explaining problem two. So I'll put this back on the screen if you can't jump right into this. So each of the first few problems, give me a graph and it's the graph of a function. This particular graph in number two is a function we call g. Maybe you might call it g of x. And we're asked to just identify some features with respect to the graph and the function. And they're fairly easy to find. Um, and there's no algebra to do. So part a wants me to find the x-intercepts. And to find the x-intercepts, I just look across the x-axis. And any time I hit a point that's on the x-axis, that will be an x-intercept. x-intercepts, you can tell they're x-intercepts because their y-coordinates will always be 0. So for this particular graph in number 2, the x-intercepts are going to be the point negative 1, 0 and 5, 0. You could separate them with a comma if you want, but you just write the two intercepts down. That would be fine. Because each of these graphs are functions, you can't have two y-intercepts because that would make the graph fail the vertical line test. Part B wants me to find the y-intercepts, so I'll just go up and down the y-axis and look for any point on the y-axis. This is a point on the y-axis, and I labeled it for you because it's a little bit hard to read um, some of these points. And that's the point 0, negative 5. Part C gives me a question written in function notation. It refers to the function g that w is this graph. And it asks me for what value of x. So it's asking me to find an x that g of x is equal to 7. In function notation, numbers to the right of the equal sign represent a y value. So this bit of function notation because the numbers to the right of an equal sign it represents a y value what problem 7 part what problem c is asking me to do is to find any point on the actually to find the x coordinate is asking me to find the x values of x find the x-coordinate of any point on the graph that has 7 as its y-coordinate. And that's the point that's going to be called out in part C of number 2. And my answer is just going to be x equals the x-coordinate of that point. So I, immediately as I started reading the question, the first, even without getting to the is, for what values of x, I knew my answer had to be an x value. And then, because I understand function notation, I understood that I wanted the x value that corresponded to y equal to 7. For part d, numbers inside of parentheses when we're using function notation represent x values. So what D is asking me to do is D is asking me to find the y coordinate of any point on the graph that has 0 for its x coordinate. It's without an apostrophe. And that question using function notation could be as asked very, very succinctly. Whereas if I'm asking you to find an x coordinate given a y coordinate, I can't ask that, that slickly, that question. But this little blurb here, find g of 0, that completely means find the y coordinate of any point that has 0 for its x coordinate. This is calling out the point 0, negative 5. And my answer for part d. I could write g of 0 equal to negative 5, or I can write y equal to negative 5, or I could just write negative 5. So for part D, 
If I wrote g of 0 equals negative 5, that would be probably the nicest answer. If I wrote y equal negative 5, that would also be a nice answer. If I just wrote the number negative 5, that would also be fine. Um, Part E and F is a little bit different between my graph and your graph because my graph, the endpoints are marked, and when the endpoints are marked, you don't extend the graph to find the domain in the range. When we go back and look at your problem one, for your problem one, when you get to do part D and E, the edges of the graphs aren't marked, so you're going to have to extend the graph up and to the left and up and to the right when you go to do the domain in the range. But for me, I'm just going to have to isolate the left and the right edge for the domain and the bottom and the top for the range. So for the domain, this graph's left edge starts there at x equal negative 1. Its right edge ends there at x equal to 6. This graph in terms of left to right it extends from negative 1 to 6 on the x-axis. So I'm going to say my domain is negative 1 to 6. For the range, I read bottom to top. The bottom of this graph is the point 2, negative 9, and its y-coordinate is negative 9. The top of this graph is the point 6, 7, and its y-coordinate is 7. So for the range, I'm going to read from bottom to top. Square brackets, because the points are on the graph, it's going to be negative 9 to positive 7. We did domain and range earlier, so I'm not explaining those in quite the detail I did when I initially you know, introduced those problems. For your problem one, if you were going to do the domain, this graph extends up and to the left forever. Eventually, it tracks all the way to the far left edge of the x-axis, and it goes up and to the right forever, and eventually, it gets all the way to the far right edge of the x-axis. The domain for your graph is going to be negative to positive infinity. And in terms of the range of your graph, the bottom of this graph is the point 3, negative 4, and its y-coordinate is negative 4. The graph goes all the way up to the top of the y-axis, which has a y-coordinate of infinity. And when I read range, I go bottom to top. The bottom y is negative 4 because it's physically a point on the graph. It gets a square bracket. The top is not physically a point on the graph. It gets a round bracket. So maybe you can do the rest of parts A, B, C, and D of number 1. And I'll flash your number 3 up here. And hopefully you can do those as well. Hopefully they're readable. Um, let me just hit a zoom in just once and see if that makes any difference. Didn't do anything. Oh, it won't zoom in because it's recording. So let me just manually zoom in. All right, so I'm going to flip to number four. Hopefully you've had a chance to pause it and do numbers one and three. And hopefully you don't even need to see me do number four because um, it's just like you know something we've already done. So beginning of number four, this is a graph called F. I'm going to look across the x-axis to find my x-intercepts. There's two places where the graph crosses the x-axis, so there's going to be two x-intercepts. There's going to be the point negative 1, 0 and positive 5, 0. Let's separate those with a comma. For the y-intercept, I look across the y-axis. There's only one point on the y-axis, and that's the point 0, 5. So the y-intercept is going to be the point 0, 5. Next question. This because it's written in function notation, and the number to the, is to the right of the equal sign, it stands for a y. I can tell by the way the question is worded for what values of x is f of x equal to 9. So it's asking me for an x value, and it's giving me a y value in kind of function notation. So this is the point that's being called out in part c. And my answer is just going to be the x-coordinate of that point. The reason this is a point that's being called out, because there's a 9 for the y, and in function notation of a number to the, to the right of the equal sign, it stands for a y. My answer is going to be x equal to 2. For part d, since it's a number inside of parentheses, it represents an x value. And it asks me to find a val y value. So when it says find f of 5, Immediately, I look at where the number is. If the number is to the right of the equal sign, 
I'm given a y, I'm trying to find an x. In function notation, if the numbers inside the parentheses is an x value, and I'm trying to find a y. The point that's being called out in question D is at point five zero. And for an answer to part D, I can write f of five equal to zero, or I can write y equal to zero, or if I want to, I can just write zero. This is probably the best answer. for part D of number four, but I take the other ones just as well. My graph when I go to do part E, because the endpoints aren't labeled, I have to extend it down and to the right and down and to the left. As I go down and to the right or down and to the left, the graph eventually gets all the way to the bottom of the graph and to the far left edge of the graph, which is negative infinity in the x direction. And going this way, eventually the graph gets to the far right edge of the x-axis and the bottom of the y-axis, which has a coordinate of negative infinity. So in terms of the domain of this, I have to read the left edge to the right edge of the extended graph. The graph extends to the far left and to the far right edge of the x-axis. The domain is going to be negative infinity to positive 5 because this is the left edge. and this is the right edge. To do the range, I have to read bottom to top and, and on the y-axis. The bottom of this graph has a y-coordinate of y equal negative infinity, and this vertex is the top point, and its y-coordinate is 9. So for the range, I'm going to read bottom first, top second. I'm looking along the y-axis. The bottom y coordinate is negative infinity. The top y coordinate is 9. Infinities always get round brackets. Points that are on graphs get square brackets. So the range for this would be negative infinity to 9. All right, so 5 through 12 are a little bit tricky in that um, students mess them up. But they shouldn't be, which means I must just do a, a cruddy job explaining them. So hopefully I've figured out something since the last time I recorded the video over this section that will make it more understandable. So each of the graphs between, each of the problems between 5 and 12 give me a graph and they have a part A and a part B. Part A asks me to find where f of x is greater than or equal to 0. Part B asks me to find where f of x is less than or equal to 0. So this part the part A where it says find where f of x is greater than or equal to 0. This is really asking me to find in terms of x the interval sometimes intervals where the graph is above the x-axis And part B, when it's asking me to find where f of x should be above or touching, I guess, because it has the or equal to. Part B, when it's saying find where f of x is less than or equal to 0, it means to find in terms of x's and only x's, num in terms of numbers on the x-axis, the intervals. where the graph is below the x-axis. Below the x-axis. So to do each of the problems between 5 and 12, I'm going to mark up my x-axis, and I'm not going to look at a single y. And how I'm going to mark up my x-axis to answer the questions is I'm going to put negative infinity on the far left edge of the x-axis, positive infinity on the far right edge of the x-axis,
and I'm going to mark the x-coordinates of the x-intercepts on my x-axis. So to do each of the problems between numbers 5 and 12, I'm going to mark negative infinity, positive infinity, and the x-coordinate of all x-intercepts on the x-axis. That's how I'm going to get started. So that's going to be first for each of the problems between 5 and 12. And then second, I'm going to create the implied intervals. I'm always going to get one more interval than x-intercepts. Because there's two x-intercepts, I'd say my sketch here implies three intervals. And infinities always get round brackets. When we're dealing with inequalities, if we have an or equal to, the numbers get square brackets. If we didn't have an or equal to, if this was just a greater than, the number would get a round bracket, the non-infinities. But because it's a greater than or equal to, I get a square bracket because of the or equal to. So the intervals that are implied, my step two, so I've marked negative infinity, positive infinity, the x-coordinates of the x-intercepts, deleted the y-coordinates because they don't help me get the answer here. And I'm going to mark the interval from negative infinity to negative 6, then the interval from negative 6 to positive 2, and then the interval from positive 2 to infinity. And then part 3, include the interval in f of x is greater than or equal to 0 if the graph is above the x-axis for that interval and include it in the f of x is less than or equal to 0 if the graph is below the x-axis. So each of these questions are asking me um, whether the graph is below, above or below the x-axis. This right here is saying what, where is f of x greater than or equal to 0? f of x is greater than or equal to 0 where y's are positive and that's above the x-axis. If I look at my first interval, the interval from negative infinity to 6, the graph is down here. So if I'm examining this interval and deciding whether this interval is going to be a part of A or part of B, it can't be part of both, I look at the graph beneath this interval. Because the graph is beneath the x-axis, the y's are negative, which means the f of x's are less than 0. It's going to go in my answer to part B. So my answer to part B for number 6 is going to have the interval from negative infinity to negative 6. When I look at the middle interval, the interval from negative 6 to 2, the graph is above the x-axis for that interval. Because the graph is above the x-axis, the y's are positive, so the f of x is greater than 0. When an interval that you mark out the if the graph is above the x-axis during that interval, then that interval goes into part A's answer. So here, the f of x's are greater than or equal to 0 because the y's are positive. The last interval that I marked out on my, my um, x-axis is the interval from 2 to infinity. And if I look at the graph in that interval, the graph is below the x-axis, which means the y's are negative, or the f of x's are negative, which means this interval, 2 to infinity, goes in the last part of my answer. Would have been nice if I gave myself some room and put these intervals next to each other with a union symbol, but the fact that I didn't is hardly that big of a deal. So the answer to 6a is going to be the interval where the f of x's are greater than or equal to 0, or the, in terms of x's, the interval where the graph is above the x-axis is the middle interval, negative 6 to positive 2. And for part b, 
the intervals where the graph is in terms of x, where the graph is below the x-axis, is the negative infinity to negative 6 and 2 to infinity. Hopefully that inspires you to do 5. I'm going to move on and do number 8 while you get to do 7. For what it's worth, for your number 7, the numbers that go on the x-axis that aren't the infinities are negative 6 and 2, just you can't, in case you can't read them. I'm going to do my number 8. I'm going to put negative 6 on my x-axis, positive 4 on my x-axis, also negative and positive infinity. When I put two numbers on my x-axis, that marks out three intervals. The intervals that are going to be implied by my numbers are negative infinity to negative 6, a middle interval from negative 6 to positive 4, and a far right interval from 4 to infinity. When I go to answer part 8a and part 8b, I need to take these three intervals and put them into the appropriate part. If I look at the first interval, the interval from negative infinity to 6, that's where the graph is here, because the graph is above the x-axis, the y's are positive or the f of x's are greater than 0. So that first interval is going to go in my answer to part A, where f of x is greater than or equal to 0. The middle interval from negative 6 on the x-axis to 4 on the x-axis, the region, that region of the graph is below the x-axis, and when the region of the graph is below the x-axis, every point along that graph there has negative y's, so the f of x's are less than or equal to 0. So for 8b, I'm going to put in the middle interval because the graph is below the x-axis, the y's are negative. The last interval that I need to look at is the interval from 4 to infinity. And in that interval from 4 to infinity, the graph is above the x-axis, so the y's are positive, so the f of x's are positive. That interval from 4 to infinity is going to go in the answer to part A, which is the regions that are the graph is above the x-axis. Now I separate these intervals with a union symbol. That would be the best answers for part A and part B. Your work for number 7 should be real similar. 9 and 10 are a little bit trickier. When I go to do number 10, I'm going to put on my x-axis negative 6, which is the x-coordinate of this x-intercept, negative 1, the x-coordinate of the next x-intercept, and positive 3, the x-coordinate of the last x-intercept. I'm also going to put positive and negative infinity. I'm going to create one more interval than um, x-intercepts. I have three x-intercepts. I'm going to get four intervals. My intervals are going to be negative infinity to negative 6, negative 6 to negative 1, negative 1 to positive 3, and positive 3 to infinity. I need to figure out for 12a which of those intervals are above the x-axis and for 12b which of those intervals are below the x-axis. If they're above the x-axis, their y's are positive and f of x is greater than or equal to 0. For part a, I'll do them in green. This interval right here and that interval right there are the two intervals where the graph is above the x-axis. So if I look at this interval that I marked out, that's between x equal negative 6 and x equal to negative 1. That's one of the intervals that's going to belong in my answer to part a. This interval right here is the far right interval. That's the interval from 3 to infinity. That's also going to go in my answer to part a. Part a gives me the, any interval where the graph is above the x-axis in, that, in that interval. For part b, I'll look at this portion of the graph and that portion of the graph because those are the two portions of the graph where the graph is beneath the x-axis where the y's are negative or where the f of x's are less than 0. And the first region that I marked here in orange is the corresponds to the interval negative infinity to negative 6. The last interval that I marked here is negative 1 to positive 3. Again, infinities will always and forever get round brackets. Numbers, if they refer to points on the graph, generally get square brackets. And when I'm finding the um, answers to these questions where 
f of x is greater than or equal to 0 or f of x is less than or equal to 0, I look to the or equal part. If there's an or equal part, then the numbers are going to get square brackets. If this was just f of x is greater than 0 and didn't have the or equal to sign, then the numbers would actually get round parentheses. For your problem, the numbers that go on the x-axis are negative 1, positive 3, and positive 5, just in case you can't see them, along with the infinities. All right, so the last two problems in this grouping, um, 11 and 12, when I go to do number 12, I'm going to put negative 4, positive 2, and positive 6 on my x-axis, along with negative and positive infinity. The intervals that are going to be called out are negative infinity to negative 4, negative 4 to positive 2, positive 2 to positive 6, and positive 6 to infinity. And now I'm going to um, mark the parts that are above the x-axis and find intervals for those. That's going to be my answer to part A. So those two intervals right there, are those two segments of the graph, are the portions of the graph above the x-axis. So when I go to do part 12a and answer where the graph is above the x-axis or where the y's are positive or equivalently where f of x is greater than or equal to 0, I'm going to pick the first interval, negative infinity to negative 4, and the last inter middle interval, square brackets, and the interval from 2 to 6. When I go to do part b, the regions where the y's are beneath the x-axis is going to be that interval and that interval. And that would represent the interval from negative infinity, negative 4, to positive 2, and then again, positive 6 to infinity. So I think I'm going to pause the video and put the rest in a part 2, possibly a part 3, because um, the next part, we start to look at um, the graph and numbers on the x-axis again. But we're gonna, instead of focusing on the x-intercepts, we're going to focus on the tops and the bottoms of the little peaks and valleys in the graph. And it's probably good to separate those. Um, and it wouldn't even be a horrible idea if you just took a break and came back to the second half of section 3.3 just because it looks similar and it's different. So when I'm asking you where the f of x's are bigger and less than 0, I'm plotting out numbers on the x-axis that represent the x-intercepts. And in the next part, I'm going to plot out numbers on the x-axis that represent the peaks and the valleys. Notice here I'm looking above and below the x-axis. In the next group of problems, I'm not going to worry so much about the x-intercepts. My regions of the graph that I'm identifying are going to be simultaneously possibly above and below the x-axis. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll do a part two here in a minute.